Hi, Jeff Spira here. And uh, I wanted to talk to you today about fitting the chine log on my boats. Now, these photos are from a builder of a, a one of my boats called Pokemoke, um, who calls himself John Tools. Um, and he's been posting daily records of his build uh, on this boat on Facebook. So I'll eventually collect all of his photos together in a, into a construction photo essay of his work and uh, post it on uh, the Pokemon page and, and probably on Facebook and and other places as well. So, um, you know, I know I'm, this is called, the boat's called a Pokemoke, and I know you, you guys think it should probably be spelled with a C because the Pokemoke River is a P-O-C-O, -O, I, but I use a K instead, and I do it just to make sure people are paying attention. <laughs> so, um, I use similar, you know, different, differently spelled words for many of my boat designs too. And uh, so anyway, the Pokemoke is a 24 foot, which is a 7.3 meter long uh, Chesapeake Bay dead rise. It's a little bit under eight and a half feet wide, uh, which is 2.6 meters, uh, which is the maximum allowable uh, towing width of boats on a trailer um, in the US and Canada anyway, without a special permit. Uh, California, you can get a you can get an annual permit to tow a 10 foot wide boat, but I, I don't know about other states, but I know eight and a half uh, on every place in the US and Canada is, is, the, is the maximum. And it's a little bit under that, so. Um, the Chesapeake Dead Rise is a, is a working fishing boat uh, popularized on the Chesapeake Bay of the US. The Chesapeake's a big, huge open bay in the mid-Atlantic area. Um, encompassing the states of Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware. It's the largest estuary in the U.S. Uh, you know, Washington, D.C., ma many of the major U.S. shipyards and, and some of the naval bases uh, for the Atlantic are on the bay there. So. And dead rises are, are really commercial fishing ve vessels. Uh, they've, been, they've been being made there for, uh, you know, 100 years or more. They have a sharp entry um, with a very deep V in the bow um, and uh, to handle the, the choppy waters of the bay. And, but they have a very shallow V at the transom, so um, it makes it a very, very stable boat and one that can handle shallower water and lots of load. So, um, so for, for a modern day boat builder, a boat user, you know, they're sturdy, rugged boats and uh, they're ideal for, uh, you know, cruising and personal boat use. If you want a moderate speed, economical and uh, heavy load carrying boat. So um, they would be great for the Great Loop, for instance, um, if, you, if you want to extend the cabin some uh, for more uh, living space on deck. So. Um, I've got them in, uh, in 24 and also 27 foot sizes now, uh, and I could, could introduce more, uh, we'll, we'll see, but uh, the 24 is much more popular than the 27. The 27 footer is called the Tangier. Uh, I know some of the commercial boats run much bigger. They run into the 40 some foot range, up to 50 and stuff, so. Um, I, I put a link down below to the Pokemoke information page where you can, you know, read all about the design and download free study prints. The study prints have a bill of materials on them so you can um, estimate how much this will cost you to build in your local area. So, um, in any event, John was one of the first uh, to very well document the installation of the chine log on one of my boats. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd use his pictures to show you how it's done uh, on all of my ply and frame boats. This includes flat bottom and V-bottom vessels, so both have, um, have these chine locks. So the first thing you need to be concerned about is the material selection. Uh, in my designs, I say softwoods are always okay to use for these elements. You know, pine, fir, cypress, uh, uh, you know, uh, a bunch of other woods <laughs> that are that are potential, um, and uh, they don't really have to be clear lumber. You can uh, use uh, some smaller tight knots that will be okay. You know, here's an example of a tight knot. I'll put a picture up here. So, this type of uh, and there's another type of knot that I would call a loose knot that looks more like this, 
and a loose knot would probably not be acceptable in the chine log because it would uh, take away too much of the uh, the stability or the strength of the of the piece of wood. So, um, but you can you know the the material does not need to be full length. You don't need to get one long piece to do this. And uh, in most cases, you can splice together shorter pieces. So if you have a loose knot and near one end or even in the middle of a, of, a, of a nice piece of lumber that you want to use you can you can cut it out and and then splice the two pieces back together now typically um, what you do is you cut a, a eight to one taper on these um, and it's easy to do uh, in a group as you can see I am put a picture of John's uh, method of doing it there and then you can use a uh, you know, belt sander or something to uh, to uh, make sure that the angles are all the same uh, on these, and then uh, then you would uh, bond the you know, flip them over and bond the two pieces together uh, to make a, a unitized piece. Now John uses uh, 3M's 5200 polyurethane adhesive for this, which is a is a good product to use for for doing that. Um, in any event. Um, you then need to uh, cut cut slots in the in the framing to make sure that uh, the chine log can be installed into it. So, I recommend using a short piece of the same size material and just kind of hold it up there and angle it to the position you want to cut it, and use that to uh, to mark the the cutout. And then uh, uh, then here, John shows you how to. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit fast, but <laughs> he shows you how to use a, a a saw and a sander to to you know approximate the cut in the right uh, you know the right angle that you that you would need for the boat. So let's take a look at this video. Um, now then you, you glue the chine log in place. Um, then you can either clamp it, which is a good idea because you don't leave any, any screw heads under, you know, on the, on the surface uh, there that you're going to later cover with plywood and then try and run screws through. So you don't have to worry about hitting screws beneath it So if you, if you, if you only uh, clamp it. But you can also, you can also uh, uh, screw it in if you wish. Uh, the, the, chine log into the into the uh, framing so that's also possible you can also use something like uh, um, uh, those those uh, composite nails uh, that that they use now that uh, that you you know you can just drive right in and leave in place so that those work well too so um, now I also get a lot of questions about how to do the bow. How do you fit the chine log up in the bow? Well, um, there's a lot of builders do it a lot of different ways, and I've seen you know a lot of pictures of different me methods of doing that, and they all seem to work just fine. I never had anyone complain that the that the uh, plywood peeled off or anything like that. So, um, but the the way John did it, it was the way I kind of intended it when I originally designed these boats, and that was uh, is that the stem is going to get sharpened to the to the entry angle, the V entry angle of the bow, and um, and so what what John did here was he marked the center line and then he um, notched in the uh, uh, the chine log so that it uh, it 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 met the bow, you know, the center line of the bow in the forward, so that after he sharpens the uh, the rest of the bow, the chine log will fit in perfectly. And this, this gives the, uh, a nice surface for the plywood to, uh, to be glued to and screwed into uh, once, once you start covering it with ply. So, um, and it, it just matches the whole, the whole thing, and, and it's, a, it's a good, efficient way to do that. 
typically what will happen is that you put ply on one side and then you uh, you trim it uh, to me and then the ply on the other side comes over the first line of ply so uh, you'll see you'll s s see that and uh, and as you as you build the boat you'll f figure that out as you as you hold those pieces of wood in your hand so uh, okay well that's the story of putting on china logs hope you enjoyed it um, the best way to ensure these videos keep coming is to like them and share them with your fellow boat builder friends and family. <clears throat> and of course, subscribe and ring the bell. So thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon.